Look at that slider, it just fell off. Let's look at this, boom. How about the keychain light? And I've recently got a whole bunch of requests for this, which is a small keychain flashlight, which I didn't really think much about, but it turns out these have been advertising a lot online. I went on Amazon and I saw a whole bunch of listings that looked just like this. While I was on there, I also found this, the Kodiak Cube by the Lightsol brand. Now they're not exactly the same thing, but they are similar. So I thought it might be fun to compare them and see how they actually stack up. So let's compare these in today's video. Let's unbox and compare the features and then get started. All right, let's take a look, closer look at the two of these. Now the Kodiak Cube, I paid $21.99 for, and the Keychain Light, I paid $18.79 for a two pack. Now the Keychain Light, this seems to be kind of a no-name brand, although it's the most popular seller on Amazon. The Kodiak Cube is sold by Lightsol, which you've probably seen lights like that. In fact, I've done a review for a Lightsol light in my Big Lots video. So it's kind of a, kind of a name brand versus a no-name brand. More expensive, less expensive, but this one's more popular online, so. It's kind of a nice rugged, like almost a GoPro feel to it, kind of a rubbery uh, exterior. You've got some instructions here and a small charging cable. Keychain lights, you've got some instructions, two cables, two lights. Now comparing the difference between these, now the, the light itself looks similar, but the housing is significantly different. Comparing some of the features, the cube goes up to 300 lumens, the keychain light up to 1000. The cube has three modes, low, medium, high. The keychain light has four, low, high, strobe, and max. The battery for the cube is 1000 milliamp hours, while the keychain light is 500, although the Amazon listing indicates that it might be powered by a AAA battery, but that is not the case. They're both rechargeable, the cube can be used as a power bank while the keychain light cannot. They both claim to be waterproof. The keychain light states IPX6. The cube doesn't really specify. The battery life of the cube is supposed to last anywhere from three to 12 hours on the keychain light. They say up to three hours. So th this one is supposed to last a lot longer. The keychain light has a tripod mount on it where the cube does not. They both are magnetic. I can see the magnet here. I guess the magnetic is underneath the, uh, the surface here. Look, oh yeah, it's, it's sticking to it. As far as the keychain goes, we have a key ring for the cube and we have this clip for the keychain mount. Take a look at the, a little closer look at the cube here. There is a power button here. So we got some juice. We have two ports here, one which is an out for charging your device and one is an in for charging the unit. I'm gonna plug into this. Taking a look at the keychain light here. Now this side has the port to charge it, which is uh, USB-C. On the other side is the button to power it on and off. Right there, we have, we have light. They say it can be used for a tripod. Uh, let's try it out. It is fitting, but it's just spinning. It's not tightening. Well, I guess it doesn't really matter that much, but yeah, it's, I guess it kind of works on a tripod as long as you don't need uh, to be totally tight. Now let's see how much these weigh. The cube here weighs 1.85 ounces. Keychain light is 1.45 ounces. So it's just a tad lighter. Not a huge difference though. So. All right, so I'm gonna make sure these are fully charged up and then we're gonna go outside tonight and get started. Now, whenever I test out flashlights, I like to go out back, shine them on the side of my house, which I've done, but I also brought back one of my more powerful flashlights, the Thru-Night T2. I wanted to see how this one compared to those. And I also wanted to try these under the hood of my car at night, which both of them showed in their ads. So let's see how that went. All right, let's start off with the keychain light here. First off, this is on high, very wide. It's a very wide. I mean, I'm moving this back and forth. It's wider than my entire house. Now high is supposedly 60% of 1000 lumens, meaning this is supposed to be 600 lumens. I don't know about that. This is uh, low, which is supposedly 300 lumens. I don't know about that either. And then they have long hold, which is their 1000 lumens supposedly. It's extremely wide light. So let me try the cube now, see how it looks. All right, here's the cube. Now one thing I noticed, the cube's kind of hard to actually find the power button. Because it's flushed, the power button is hard to find. But the cube is also, it's similarly wide. And this is high, which is supposedly 300 lumens. Uh, this is medium, which I believe is 125. And then this is low, which is supposedly, I uh, think 35. Normally I would have both these on the same wall, but because it, their beams are so wide, I have to do these in a split screen. So let's do these separately. All right, now just for comparison's sake, this is the cube on high, which is supposedly 300 lumens. Now, if you take the Thru-Night T2 on medium, which is 366 lumens, look at this, boom. I know it's more of a condensed uh, light. It's not as wide, but look at the difference. 
massive difference. Now look at, look at the through night on high, you can't even see it, it just it absorbs it. All right, take a look down the yard here, see what we got. Now here's the cube on high, how's that look? It kind of illuminates everything somewhat. Medium, not so much, low, uh, even less. Keychain light on max. What do you guys think? Keychain light on high, keychain light on low. Both these lights are advertised as something you can use to work on your car, so let's try this out. I got the cube right here, let's check it out. Does it stick? It doesn't seem real sturdy, but it is it is staying. And it is, it is, it is a decent amount of light, actually. Let's try the, the keychain light now. Uh, once again, the magnet is a little bit on the weak side, but it, it does perfectly light up the, uh, the engine, so not too bad, really. You can see how just how weak that magnet is, very weak. It will stay eventually, but it's, it's barely hanging on. It'll work. I just, I would, you gotta be careful. And once again, look at this, very weak. It's like actually sliding around in here. I'm not sure which, which magnet is weakest. They're both very weak. I, I'm not really impressed by either one of these magnets. That slider it just fell off. Not great, not great. All right, next up for a few more tests I did to try to see which one is the better flashlight. All right, so the Cube can supposedly charge a phone, but not a lot, because it only's got a 1,000 milliamp hour battery. My iPhone is at 58%. Let's see what kind of charge I get out of it. Opening the Cube, plugging in the cable. All right, it is charging, it's at 58%. I'll come back when the Cube has been depleted and see how much of a charge I got. All right, the Cube is done, and the phone is at 70%, meaning I got a whopping 12% battery boost on this phone. All right, let's try some waterproof tests here. Now, the Cube is supposedly submersible, waterproof. They show that in their ads. The keychain light is IPX6, which is not submersible. It's, you can get sprayed with water from any direction. But because I have two of them, I'm gonna see if it's submersible anyways. Dropping the Cube, and it sinks. It's sunk to the bottom. How about the keychain light? Keychain light sinks to the bottom as well. All right, there they are, there they are underwater. They are in there. All right, I don't see any bubbles coming out of the keychain light, so maybe it is a little bit submersible. Let's pull the cube out and see what we got. And we have light, yay, and the keychain light, which this is a, the big question mark. Will it still work? Yay. I've got all my lights off in here. Let's see how bright these are. First up, the cube. All right, well, it's, it's kind of a harsh light. Shine right in my face here, but it's certainly bright. Let me see, this is, a, this is on high. What do you guys think? I'll compare this to the, uh, the keychain in a minute here. Let me try the keychain on the highest mode, on their max mode here. All right, there we go. That's pretty harsh. First of all, how does that compare to the other one? I'm gonna put a side-by-side -side screen. You can see the cube and you can see this one, see which one looks better. They're kind of close as far as my eyes go. Shine on the wall there. How does that look uh, in comparison to the cube? I'll put them side-by-side -side once again. I, I don't see a huge difference, to be honest. I mean, I don't, I don't know if you would, even having two of these, I don't know if you would use these as studio lights, but could you? It's not terrible. It's not great, but it's not terrible either. One of them, maybe not. Two? Maybe. Brightness-wise, I don't see a huge difference. So really, at this point, it kind of comes down to all the other features and the functions. I have one more test outside to do, and then we're going to compare the features and wrap this thing up. I say what potentially is the worst test for last, the drop test. If it survives this, I got nothing else to throw at it. I have no idea if they're even supposed to pass this kind of test, but we shall see if they will. Here we go. From about five feet up. And... Didn't sound good. Let's see. Cube light still works but it does have a, a crack in it. There's a crack in the cube light. Keychain light looks like it's intact as well. They both survived, a little bit of crack on one, but otherwise, not too bad. All right, after the drop test, they do both still work. You can see there is a small crack on the cube though, but not a big deal, still works. Uh, one feature I did forget to mention on the keychain light is it does have a little stand here, so you can stand it up, which is kind of nice, I guess. Potentially useful. All right, so here are a few observations after trying these flashlights out. Number one, both of them have magnets and both the magnets are weak. Both of them have clips, but I feel like the keychain clip is superior. Let me show you. I took it out of my backpack earlier. Keychain clip just clipped right on there very quick. Look at that, no problem. Came off easily. This kind of clip is not nearly as fast. It's gonna be much more problematic. So to me, the keychain clips clip is much better. On the cube, I, I always struggle to find the power button because it's, it's flush. You don't really feel it when you're struggling to find it at night. I wish it was a little bit raised or recessed so you could figure it out. At night, your hand goes right over it and don't really notice it. Now the brightness of these I think were pretty close, pretty good, but the keychain light supposedly is a thousand lumens. I don't buy that at all. Neither one of these could really compare to the through night, even at the 366 lumens. 
So I like the brightness, but I don't think that the 1000 is accurate for the keychain. The Cube's power bank feature is kind of a nice feature. It's not gonna give you a lot. It gave me 12%, but in an emergency, that 12% might make a big difference. In general, if I had to pick, I'd probably go with the Cube because it has better battery life and it has an extra power bank for an emergency. Although the keychain light does have a much better clip and it's a lot easier to find the power button. But if you've used one of these mini flashlights, tell us what you think in the comments below. I appreciate you watching and I'll see you next time.